Hello, I'm Pastor Detina Hurd, Meditating Life Center Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's our Sunday service for October the 16th, 2022. But of course, you can listen to it and praise and worship with us any day, at any time, any hour, or even listen to it multiple times, or definitely share it <coughs> excuse me, with someone else. And if you missed any of our services, you can go to our Facebook uh, pages, I was going to say channel, um, that is Minister Detina or Detina Hampton Heard or Pastor Detina at the Meditating Life Center. Those are on Facebook. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Minister Detina. And we have all kinds of praise and worship uh, lessons, sermons, everything on there that would, um, you would need, <coughs> excuse me, in order to praise the Lord with us. Um, today's sermon is going to be called Today's Meditation. We are a meditation center, uh, not like you just think of own, but we meditate on the Lord. And so we want to make sure that we help you to keep your focus on the Lord and the things of God as you go about your everyday life. And uh, we're going to use Psalm 25 to help us along in that area. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, you just put the cash app, <coughs> excuse me, gosh, on your phone, and then you would... Uh, the cash app on your phone and then we would you would um, do dollar sign capital d-a-t-i-n-a capital h-e-r-d which is my name um if you want to donate give us a gift or whatever like that this is a blessing to you especially you all who are regular followers or consider yourself members and hopefully you will come once we get a physical location uh, or if you want to contact us we can tell you another way that you can help us in ministry and donate if you would like to Right, or, or communicate with me like a lot of you have been doing, been, you know, communicating and responding on our Facebook pages and on our YouTube channel or talking to me and things like that. And I really appreciate that. And we just love that you all are being blessed by this service. And I'll probably put our bulletin on Facebook today. I usually do. I put the bulletin on there so that when you do listen to this video, you can participate in the service. So go gather your whole family and your friends sometimes and just have service with us. Amen. Uh, as you get your Bible and turn to Psalm 25, and today it's like, it's like a liturgy, but we're not going to do call and response, but we're going to read it. And I may feel inspired to comment on it or expound upon, you know, some of the principles in Psalm, 20, Psalm 25. But mostly it's so good. It's just such a blessing. It helps. It's such an encouraging passage that we, reading it alone may just be enough, but we'll see if we want to um, have any um, additional um, conversations about it. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for another day that you have made. Lord, we are rejoicing. We are so glad. Lord, we just know that you are good. Your mercies are new every morning. Your love is new every day that you care about us. You hear us. You see us. You heal us. You deliver us. You provide for us. You give us perfect peace. God, we just praise your holy name because you are good. Your mercy endures forever. Your love endures forever. You are God all by yourself. You are all powerful. You are mighty. You are holy. You are righteous. You are God. You are everything to us, God. We just thank you for being so good to us, God. And right now, we just lift up our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Lord, we know it's our reasonable service. God, we just want to lay before you and be what you want us to be. So clean us up by your Holy Spirit. God, fill us with your Spirit this morning. Fill us with your Spirit every day, God, so that no matter what move we take, uh, no matter what path we walk down, we realize thou art with us. Your rod and your staff, it does comfort us. You prepared that table before us in the presence of our enemies and our cup runneth over. You anoint us our head with oil. We just thank you, God, for being so good to us. Lord, for encouraging us and keeping our helping us to keep our faith and sending others and uniting us under you as family, God. And so be with us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, God. Help us to be better, Holy Spirit. Step on our conscience. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, step on our conscience, Lord, and push us toward righteousness and holiness. For you said, be ye holy, for I, your God, am holy. That means living a righteous life. And we know that we're going to stand before you and you're going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now get away from me, you worker of iniquity. And so we praise your holy name and we lift up anyone who is in need today, any area where, area where we are even in need today, whether it's mental or spiritual. 
whether it's emotional or even in our physical bodies or our physical circumstances. God, we know you to be the deliverer. We know you to be the healer. We know you to be the provider. We know you, Holy Spirit, to be our guide or to be the reminder of God's word, <clears throat> to be the lifter of our heads, Lord. So right now we stand in confidence before you knowing our needs will be met. And so we pray for one another, Lord, like your word says, and like you placed in our hearts for those who are going without, Lord, that people step in, that they their eyes are open to see what you have provided, and for that to be enough, to be content whether abased or abound, whether down or whether up, because we know that better things are here and better things are coming because we will be with you. And God, help us to, to follow that great commission and to go out and make disciples, teaching them to obey <clears throat> everything that you have taught us, God, and we know that you are with us until the end of the age. Lord, so we just lift people up, touch their bodies, Lord, heal their bodies, Lord, comfort them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let them jump up and dance. Lord, let them be filled with the joy of the Lord. Let them be filled with peace of mind and heart. Let them know that you are there, God. Let others come alongside and give the comfort that you have given us, God. Show them the love that you have given us, God, because you will get the glory. People will look at us and wonder, you know, who is our God? They'll see our light shine before men, <clears throat> before people, and they will give glory to you, our God who is in heaven. And so, Lord, as this service goes forth, we just hope and pray and ask that it be a blessing to everyone, Lord, who hears it, who participates in it, who comes alongside, who joins our group, <clears throat> who joins this ministry, God. And Lord, I ask you to touch my voice right now in the name of Jesus, God, because I don't know what's going on with that, but you do. So, Lord, just be with us, and you will get the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, we're gonna, next we're going to move to our scripture. One of these times I'm going to let you all lead the service, because these days when I'm going to, my voice is like a train whistle. And I'm just <clears throat> constantly clearing my throat. I should have drank some water or something, I guess. Um, we always said we're going to do this service just like we, it was in, you know, if we were in our building, and there was tons of people instead of just a few. And I would be clearing my throat, just like I'm doing, so. Yeah, but you'd have my armor bearer bring you some cold water. Yeah, right maybe there. someone would bring me some water. Because um, that just started. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but our scripture, if we, you all that are familiar with it, is our foundational scripture. You know, and we're always open to someone wanting to present other scripture. And, of course, on our Facebook pages and things like that, there's plenty of scripture. All the time is God inspires so that you can always study. And of course, you should be studying it on your own, learning the Word of God. But our foundational scripture at Meditating Life Center Ministries is Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. And it reads, So, so let's, let's not, not get tired, tired of, of doing, doing what, what is good. good. At just, just the right time, time we, we will reap a harvest of blessing, blessing if we don't give, give up. Therefore, Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. You know, it's a book. We a blessing if we just don't faint. Amen. We don't give up. Our mission statement says that we're meditating on God's word, communing with God, and abiding in Jesus. That's our that's our state right there. It's Standing right there, we're meditating on God's word. We believe you, God. We're communing with God. We know that he is with us, and we are abiding in Jesus. We believe in your word. He is our good shepherd, like we learned last week. And like some of you all might have already known, he, the Lord is our shepherd, and we have everything that we need. We shall not want. It is prohibited. Shall not means it is prohibited to go without when you are in the family of God. So he always will make a way. Amen. And that's what we know, and that's what we believe, and that's what we walk in. Amen. 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 I'm about myself. <laughs> Y'all bad in Jesus right. today? Yes. Amen. Our vision statement reads, number one, it, it should, should never, never be Christians hurting another Christian. Christian. And I'll tell you, every week that goes with our Galatians 6, doesn't it? Yes. It says, whenever we have that opportunity, do good to everyone but especially to those in the family of faith. So that's Christians should never be doing anything purposefully that they know would hurt or harm another Christian. And we know forgiveness is available. We're supposed to go to God, confess our faults, confess our sins, confess our faults to one another, 
know, God, is, he forgives us. Um, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But we have to admit our faults. We have to repent. That means to turn away from them. We choose God over our sin. Yes. Hallelujah. We choose righteousness. So it should never be a Christian hurting, purposefully hurting another Christian. Sometimes stuff happens and people's feelings get hurt. But it should be never because of evil or wrongdoing. And number two says, regardless of religion, affiliation, or denomination, if we consider ourselves good, these are quotation marks, moral, or righteous as this family of God, we must avoid and or repent of wrongdoing, sin, and or crime. Number three. We We share share what what we we learn. learn. We don't just criticize ignorance, wrongdoing, or foolish behavior. We come alongside and model good, right, wise, godly, and righteous thinking, behavior, obedience, and decision making. And that's part of teaching them to obey everything that God has taught us. Amen. So, um, Brother Tom, you want to pray? Yes, ma'am. Most loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to gather with your saints, rightly dividing your word, iron sharpening iron. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us and continue to walk with all of us as we go through life uh, spreading your word and your mercies and your glory. In Jesus' blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 So we tried to practice last night. I should try to tell you this. But some of these songs I always say, like most people have heard them, you know, a lot of times. And we've been in ministry a long time. I've been in ministry my whole life pretty much, even as a child, because my dad was a pastor. <clears throat> but, um, and so these songs I've heard them a thousand times. But sometimes the people in the congregation, they go like, I'm not sure about that. Or in my leadership, they go, I'm not sure about that. So last night we went over over this song. And a lot of you all know it, so I want you all to just, when you're watching this video, when you're singing, just sing it with your whole heart. Um, because I just love it because it basically says God's not two-faced. That's what I told for a time. I said basically it's saying God's not two-faced. So when other people's turning on you and lying to you and you can't trust them to be who they say they are, I just sing this song. <laughs> Amen. Remember, God's not two-faced. Okay, so it's great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. 
that, huh? Yeah, what a crew. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now it's offering time. Again, if you want to give gift to this ministry, you put the cash app on your phone or contact us. But the cash app is dollar sign, capital D A T I N A, capital H E R D. Together is one word, Tina Heard. You can't be God-giving no matter how you try. Just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high. Our giving is in vain. You know the the Bible. T- the Bible tells us to give, and it shall be given to us. Full measure, shaking up, pouring over. You know, to the full, you get a hundredfold blessing. You, get, you know, not just because you gave or how much you gave, but the, the giving comes with a blessing in the Bible. And I know that I'm a giver. We give of our time. We give of our finances. We give of our resources, um, as God has commanded for us all to do. Um, and we have never gone without. And so we give glory to God. You know, I remember when I was a a single mom when I was uh, divorced and I um, used to like just empty out my change first I, you know back at that church they believed in tithe and offering you know as a base if you didn't know how much to give just as a base you know really in the New Testament you, you give sacrificially even more right um, so they believed in tithe and gave tithe but I would you know have paid my bills and bought food for my children and I would have just change it and I just feel the Holy Spirit just prompt me to just take my purse and just empty the change out now, I'll be like, gosh, I won't have any more money till I get paid again or whatever. And I just never went without. I never did. And so I, I just always believe in giving. You can give to this ministry. Give to the ministry that, you know, that feeds you, that's serving you. Um, and don't ever think, you know, that we're, we will abuse the, you know, the finances or anything like that. We're just trying to get established, you know, in the Lord. So Dollar Sand to Tina Heard or contact us and we'll tell you how to give if you want to do your giving to this ministry. Amen. Amen. As when you want to pray over the offering, just thank God for the offering. Thank you. Thank you, O Lord, for another day to breathe and spread your word out for everyone that needs to hear and that wants to hear and people that try to ignore but they can't because it's true. <laughs> Amen. Amen. About the offering, thank you for the gifts. Uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for the gifts and thank you for the givers. We. We thank everyone for everything they do for, yeah. <laughs> amen. 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 You know, and I was just like, they used to have us praying. They say, be ready. I know the Bible says be ready because you don't know when the master is coming. But uh, most of us who grew up in church, you know, we're raising our children up in ministry, you know, to be able to serve the Lord from birth. From, what they say, from the womb to the tomb, you know, yeah. you just get called on. And so you, you're prepared. And that's how you learn. I mean, you just... You, you pray, and you pray from your heart. You don't have to make something up. You don't have to get up and copy other people. So I respect you that you pray what's on your heart. And as your heart matures in Christ and as your heart matures out here in this world for the, to see the things that God is doing for you, your prayers will you know, probably get maybe longer or bigger. But just always pray what's on your heart, and God glorifies that. So we appreciate that you open your mouth and, and you say what's on your heart. As we don't ever think I'm not good enough because God hears you when you pray from your heart. Amen. Amen. So now it's time for our sermon. I really don't have much of a song um, because I like um, Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, 
Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And I thought about as I look back over my life, I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It's because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Because thy compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faith. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loosed my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turned my darkness into days. Been my friend in the time of trouble. Joy, hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and one. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. You loosed my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into days. You've been my joy in the time of trouble. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your faithfulness. Even when we haven't been faithful, you're faithful. You always keep your word. And so we give you glory as this word goes forth. We just pray that it touches fertile ground and does, and does what you set out for it to do. And you'll get the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I was waiting to call. <coughs> All right. Psalm 25. And I want us to read it together, especially with my voice acting up today. And we have the King James Version, and I have other versions uh, with me. And it starts off. Tom, you want to start it off? Yes, Pastor. Unto thee, <coughs> O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. So how do you feel about that? How do I feel about it? Yeah. Hey, the Lord behind me. He's, I'm asking him to lift up my soul, to let I me mean, not be ashamed. Usually that's something that people get. I don't want to talk about the Lord. I'm ashamed of it. And let not my enemies triumph over me. You don't want the bad guys to get the better of you. That's right. It's like, in the um, New Living Translation, it says, Oh, Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced. And how many people out there today are feeling like, there are people that seem like they're more powerful than you or things are not going your way. And so you take it to the Lord. We say, we cry out to God and we say, unto you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto you, God, I lift up my life. Unto you, O oh Lord, Lord, I trust in you, O oh God. Don't let me be ashamed and don't let my enemies triumph over me. And that's one of our stances that we take. I trust God in this situation. There's a lot of people coming at me. There's a lot of people doing wrong to me. But Lord, I know you have my back. You said, vengeance is yours. You're going to repay them for what they do to us, what they do to your people. They're doing it to you, O oh God. So we lift up our soul. We lift up our lives. We lift up our everything before you, O oh God, because we trust you to not let us be ashamed. Let's not be ashamed because we worship you. Let's not be ashamed because you are our God. Don't even let us be ashamed when we mess up, God. Although we may feel shame, Lord, the forgiveness is available. Let us remember to come to you and you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But, Lord, don't let our enemies triumph over us, Lord. Don't let this world believe that Satan has more power than you. Amen. That's when you want to read verse 3. Yeah, let none <laughs> that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Read the next verse. Shoe me that... It's like show, but... Go ahead. Oh. Show me James? thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Yes. Path. So what do you think that's even saying? Do you understand that? In verse 3? 
Um, if I read it in English terms, then I'd probably understand. Yeah, read it, read it the way it says, like verse three. What do you think it's saying? When it says, "Let none that wait on thee be ashamed," what do you think that means? What do you um, say to God? I feel like it would mean like. Let me not be ashamed of myself or be ashamed of speaking out to the people that want to hear or that need to hear and not be ashamed of people like hurting me and me not winning those fights. Wow. Amen. Yeah, it says that. Because technically I win out of all of them because I didn't get in trouble for it. So. <laughs> yeah, it says. <laughs> that none that wait on thee be ashamed. So we, we said in verse 1, remember like in English class, you go back to the first sentence to find out what's going on in, in the in the conversation. And he's saying like, hey, don't I'm trusting in you, so don't let me be ashamed. And don't let anybody who waits on you be, be ashamed. Let the ones who's doing wrong, who's messing with me for no reason. Amen. Those who transgress without a cause. Now he's not even saying, or you know, if we were to pray this, we're not even saying like, okay, I understand that I did something and people did something in return. You know, he's not even dealing with that. He's saying, like, people are messing with me for no reason. How many people have somebody mess with you for no reason? Amen. Amen. Mm. And, and so that, that happens a lot. Well, you, you can say it out loud. You don't have to just hold your hand up. People hear you. And, uh, yeah, people are going to be messing with you without a cause. Remember the Bible says that when Jesus went to the cross, it was one of the prophecies that was fulfilled. They hated him without a cause. You know, they hated me without a cause for no reason. Amen. They was just jealous. Oh, my God. Am I the next Jesus? <laughs> So it says, show me your ways. Just show me. Learn, let me learn your word. Let me see your people, you know, living out your word. Lord, let me hear your voice. Let me see the manifestation of your glory, your goodness in this world, in my life, Lord. So show me thy ways. Teach me thy paths. Remember last week we were talking about Psalm 23, that he leads us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. So he's with us. For thou art with me, your rod and your staff. They, you know, they, they comfort they me. Comfort me. He's, he's guiding us along like little sheep. Amen. So sh teach us your paths. Amen. So that we don't wander off like sheep, you know, just following any wind of doctrine or whatever anybody else is saying. Don't let us forget what you have said. Because there's a lot of people out here, a lot of false Christians. There's a lot of people that just use your word, you know, for, acc for acclamation. You know, so people will clap for them and say, wow, you must be holy. And then they lead people into sin or lead them to do wrong. Amen. By pretending. So, you know, the, the Bible says in the last days, it's going to be all these false prophets and the false teachers. And we understand teachers can be anybody who is trying to tell you what to do. Right. So if, you're, if you were teaching someone to play Oculus and then you said, well, the way you play Oculus, you take off all your clothes. <laughs> you know? And you go like, wait, what, what are you teaching people? Amen. So those kind of people can mislead people in any kind of teaching position. It does not have to be a formal teacher. I mean, it could be a parent. It could be a grandparent. It could be a relative that's in authority. It could be you or me. And whenever we're trying to tell someone right from wrong and the thing to do, so be careful with that. That's why everybody can be a teacher in the James says in the Bible, because you're going to be judged more harshly. Amen. But a lot of, most of the time we are going to find ourselves in the role of being a teacher. Amen. And so we, our number one teacher is God. Teach me thy paths. Uh, by the time we read verse 5 and 6. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. And don't forget, y'all have y'all's Bibles if y'all want to turn it to it where it will make it easier for you to read it. Mine's King James on the same thing. <laughs> nice try. You still be in the same situation. Nice so it try. says, remember your New Living Translation as much as you want me to read some, uh, some of the other translations. It says, uh, remember, O oh Lord, your compassion and your unfailing love which you have shown me from long ages past. And then verse uh, 5, it says, lead me by your truth and teach me for you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. And so this, the whole conversation is my hope is in you. My trust is in you. Uh, don't let me be ashamed. Don't let people mess with me for no reason. Amen. You're the God of my salvation. I'm waiting on you. And he says, remember, you've been with me this whole time since the very beginning. So you have a choice to make, right? Because some people have joy in their sin, right? 
But you think some people love it? They love people more than they love God, so they like people pleasing people. So we have to be careful with that because our hope is in the Lord, and that's the truth to us. Is what God says. Nobody could tell you something different. That happened. I went and eat it. You know, the devil says, "Hey, is that really the truth that you shouldn't do that?" Is that really the truth? And so we already see that test. That one's pretty clear. If someone says something different than what God is saying, right? Thou shalt, thou shalt not, you know, learn those Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, you know, you should put God first, you know, and all those things. Thou shalt not covet. We did a sermon on coveting, wanting what belongs or who belongs to someone else. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not murder, you know, bear false witness, you know, all, all the commandments. Um, of God and then all the teachings forgiveness love love one another you know love doesn't hurt people on purpose all those things all those lessons teach us God teach us teach us by your Holy Spirit teach us by your word teach us by other Christians real Christians that come along Lord not wolf and she, wolves and sheep clothing not false prophets Lord don't let us fool ourselves because at the end on the last days it's going to be a mass deception where people God's just letting people go on and believe whatever they want to because they're going to be destroyed in the end and we never want that to be us, people of God, family Amen. of God. Amen. I want to see y'all in heaven. Amen. Amen. And so, says, so verse 7 says, Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, to, according to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. So that was like Psalm 23. It's for your name's sake. Amen. Like when people say, you shaming the family. Amen. When you go out and you act a fool and you're not a good person. Like, what's your mama's name? You know, people say, who are your parents? Amen. And people talk about the school and they'll say people have bad parenting, not necessarily because sometimes people have mental health issues and things like that are just naturally rebellious, but, you know, people will tend to blame your whole family and say, look at your bloodline, you know? And back in the Old Testament, they got rid of bloodlines because of that reason. Amen. It's going to wipe out those, you know, sinful natures of your family, you know, say it like that. But now we're in the New Testament and we got that forgiveness and that grace and the mercy. So we say, remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, Remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Amen. Save me for your sake. Lord, I want to serve you. I want to be what you want me to be. Lord, I'll just clean us up, God. Help us. Forgive us. Lord, and lead us on that path of righteousness for your name's sake. So people will look at us and they see you. Verse 8 says, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way. New Living Translation says, The Lord is good and he does what is right. Amen? Amen. He does Amen. what's right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. But you have to want to see it. Amen? You have to want to walk on those paths of righteousness. Amen? You can't be just pretending. And then every time he's not looking, you put up the church finger and slide on over to the other side. Amen? I think you can just go both ways. There is no middle with God. Jesus said, Either you're for me or you're against me. Amen? So get a side alone over like the old Broadway shows and get on, on the right path. Amen? And stay over there. Oh, you want to read verses 9 and 10, Brother Tom? The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. What's the meek? Do you know? Uh, a meek is a uh, well from what I'm understanding a meek is like a a meek person someone that's more tender no mm. someone that's beneath the other person it's kind of true it's like they're humble they not they're, they're, they're humble they're, they're like humble but also beneath others not necessarily this meek in the bible it means that you're humble you're able to humble yourself some people call meekness uh, strength under control like you can you can be able to say like you can go first you know even though I know I fully can I'll give you another story um, this is less than one that I thought it would today but it's like a, it was a one girl was hitting another girl I'm hitting a boy in one of my classes they for some reason it's high school or something that girls and boys I mean it's just crazy and so they she was hitting a boy and I said why do you young ladies always fight with boys here lately you know putting your hands on boys because you know that if that man hits you that young man hits you back as hard as you seem to be hitting him, that, you know, he will suffer a more severe penalty because he is a man. But yet, he would seemingly have the right to hit you back because you're sitting there hitting him. And of course, I made them stop hitting each other, of course. But I just wanted to know. And she said, because it shows that we're equal. And I was like, no, it doesn't. It's, it's like it's a waste of energy because 
you already know that you can hurt the other person. I'm like, I connect like a young woman, and I know some of you say it's stereotypical, but I like being a woman, I like being a traditional woman, because I know my power. I know how to work. I know how to make money. I'm educated. I know how to look good. I know how to take care of people. I know all those things that the Lord has taught me. I don't know everything. I know how to learn. I have a teachable spirit. I know how to listen. Okay, so I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty mentally healthy, spiritually healthy, and on my way. I'm all, Joyce Meyer says I'm okay, and I'm on my way. And so I don't always have to use all my energy. I don't have to use all my energy trying to show that I'm a caring person. I don't have to use all my energy uh, showing that I'm a giving person. I don't have to show all my energy to show that I'll mess you up if you put your hands on me. Amen. Uh, you know, just saying it bluntly. I know that. You know, I don't have to show my sexuality. There's a place for that. You know, within marriage and stuff, I'll we'll have a great time. Okay, my husband will be very happy. Amen. All right. So it's like those. You know, and, and so there's no reason to be putting yourself out there like that. You know, if you know you're attractive, if you know you're strong, if you know you have money, all those things, you just walk meekly and humbly. And giving glory to the Lord and saying, like, I already know that about myself. There's no reason for every day to be an occasion to get other people's approval or everybody else's attention in proving who I am, if that makes sense. And so she said I was old-fashioned. She said, you just want girls to be all soft and to be like that. And I'm like, no, because I already know that if someone puts their hands on me, they're going to get messed up. So why would I have all this energy for to respond to everything everybody says? And so that's basically meek. It's like to humble yourself before, because of the Lord, before the Lord, and let people go first. Let people, you know, sometimes be able to have us have their say or whatever. Let circumstances unfold. Sometimes, you know, be led by the Holy Spirit, um, and then uh, the Lord will do the rest. The meek He'll guide in judgment because you'll humble yourself and you just wait for what you know, or you apply what you know that the Lord will want from you. He's teaching us His way because you can sit still long enough, keep your mouth shut long enough, keep behave yourself long enough, stay in your seat. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm not as good. <laughs> See, long enough to be able to hear from the Lord. Quit walking around. I know, put it into practice. Amen. And he will show us his ways. Amen. And Amen. so the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. If you're humble and have a teachable spirit, and you want to know how to, uh, what good judgment is and which way to go. You want to do 10 through 15? Yes. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. And so that's good. Yours is different than mine. Go ahead. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Stop right there. Okay. Did you get anything out of any of that, or do you need to look before, back at it? Before I was interrupted, sure. Well, your pages are really different than mine. Go ahead. Well, you printed this. Um, are you being insupportant? No, go ahead. <laughs> no, ma'am. Ma sorry, Pastor. Uh, he asked the Lord to pardon our in, my iniquities because they were great. So that means in, uh, earlier it says, uh, that "Remember not the sins of my youth." Yeah, when I was young, or when we were young, we might have. And you only you only had sins when you were young. No, no, I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about now, too. <laughs> it last started week. in the young. Uh, last week when you were younger. <laughs> yesterday at about 12, 15. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what man feareth the Lord? Well, the man that uh, he will teach his ways. So if, you're, if you fear the Lord, which is the beginning of knowledge, I believe All right, the Bible the says. All right? Be in the wisdom. Yes, ma'am. Uh, He's, he's telling us that uh, my soul will uh, dwell at ease and my seed will inherit the earth. Wow, wow. blessing. That's it. All my kids are going to reap the benefits that he's promised. Yeah. Okay. So it says, yeah, all those paths are mercy and truth. Don't you want mercy? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand the things you do wrong, the things you don't know yet? 
We need God's mercy. We need his truth. We need his teaching uh, because our iniquity is great because even just one sin, the wages of sin is death. It didn't change. It's just that we're in a dispensation of grace and mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your mercy. You give us time to get it right. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice that you are beside the Father and you are making intercession on our behalf. You love us and you talk to God on our behalf. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking our prayers and putting them into the proper words that align with God's will so that we will know Know what it is that God wants for us. So we fear the Lord. We respect God because and we want Him to teach us. And so we want to be at ease. We get the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that is in Christ Jesus. As a family, we have peace. We all stand strong in the Lord. And we understand that those blessings go down even to our children from generation to generation to generation of those who love and fear the Lord. We praise the Lord for that. That's when you want to read some? Go as far as you want to. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. <clears throat> the troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Okay, stop right there. Thanks. Did you get anything out of that? You can look at it. It's right in front of you. Mm. Just. What do you think that he's, the, the psalmist, the person that wrote this, is saying to the Lord in the whole theme of the thing? I'm pretty sure he's like, please give me mercy for everything that I've done, pretty much. Yeah. And then I'd fix it. Yeah. What's up? You want to say something? I, it, it, it seems like the theme of this is forgive all my sins. Yeah, it, repeat, repeat, repeat. So obviously the psalmist realizes that they've uh, sinned and they're asking For over and over and over again to forgive me. Yeah, and, look, and, and we'll finish it off and then it's a little deeper than that. Uh, as far as you start, stop at verse 16. Uh, 18, actually. 18. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. I think you heard that. Yeah. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem mm -hmm. Israel, O oh God, out of all his troubles. And so we see at the end of this song, that's the main point. Like you said, he's asking for forgiveness, but moreover than that, he's saying, keep my soul, deliver me. Deliver me from my enemies. Don't let me be the one that's ashamed. God, I'm making the proclamation that I trust you. I'm standing in you. I'm depending on you. I'm leaning on you. You ever felt like that before? You went home to mama, daddy, and you said... All these people just keep trying to bully me. And mama went to the school. Granny went to the school and said, don't be bullying Aspen. Amen. So you're not standing by yourself, right? No. Did, didn't I go? Yeah. <laughs> okay. People you're went still in there and, and I'm not. Huh? I said, you're still there and yeah, I'm not. But that's because I'm working there. But <laughs> it's like uh, on your behalf. Even as a matter of fact, when I went, it was one of the reasons I went was because somebody had messed with you. And I said, I'm going to this particular school and teach there. Amen. And that's like, God, I'm coming to this school with Aspen. Amen. I'm going to be with you while you're in there. I'm going to send Granny to even come in there with you. Amen. To help about your enemies. Look how good God is. So you, that's good. You made a good point that God may have motivated me to go there to that particular school because you, you had different things going on. You're like, God, I'm trusting you. Don't let me be ashamed. Don't let my enemies defeat me, Lord. I understand that I'm not a perfect person, but these people are messing with me for no reason. So I need your help. I need your strength. And they know I'm leaning on you. They know I'm leaning on you to make sure that the right thing happens. And I'm just so distressed. Amen. And people feel like that all over. If you feel like that today, remember that God is with you. Remember you have a family the family of God, amen, that is with you. We understand. We might not have your particular circumstance, but we do understand what it's like to be bullied. We understand what it's like to be persecuted. The Bible says we will be perse persecuted. And definitely Peter says, as long as it's not for doing evil, then it's normal. That people are, that the devil, God has kids, and who else has kids? We do. That's, but who else has kids? <laughs> if God has kids... Remember, we learned this at the very beginning. The devil has the kids. The devil no, has yeah. kids. Uh. And remember, time you don't even have no kids. So it's like. <laughs> that, 
That I'm aware of. Oh, well, don't get, that's another subject. <laughs> Amen. That's called fornication. That's called sins of my youth. Okay. So, right now we're talking about, like, keep me, consider my enemies. There are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. And I'm taking them, and I'm putting them on here. Because we remember Psalm 23 said, you prepare a table before before me in the presence of my enemies and so we giving them over to you God and we ask Lord that we can keep the love in our hearts even for our enemies that we can try to keep the peace in our hearts even for our enemies we you know we use our rights that we have because you said obey the laws of the land if somebody needs to go to jail or somebody needs to be uh, put up boundaries to protect yourself or whatever like that but we still love them but Lord we giving them over to you God just like we give ourselves over to you God and we ask for forgiveness Lord of our sins and we ask Lord that you be with us Lord that you protect us God we believe you that you are the one who will deliver us from evil and so keep us deliver us clean us up give us integrity God and the glory belongs to you Amen. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, today is the day of salvation. Um, you can say those same prayers. Look how easy it is to pray sometimes. Amen. We, we've been using the Psalms, and those are like songs. You know, this is they even have this song. It's on YouTube. You can go listen to it. Um, I forgot what it's called, but um, it's greatest our faithfulness. No, not the, not no, greatest our faithfulness. Although it is on YouTube, it's a song on Psalm twenty five. I uh -huh. forgot what it's called. I wrote it down, but I don't know what it is now. I forgot what I wrote it. But it's a song, this, um, Psalm 25 um, is a song. And so you can go listen to it on YouTube. But these kind of psalms and things, you can read those if you don't even know what to say and pray to the Lord. But you want him to hear your prayers. You want to, the promises of God to cover you. And then, then you have to make that confession of faith. You have to believe God. You have to believe he's God and you have to believe he's a rewarder of those who look, after, look for him. Seek him diligently, want to be what he wants us to be. Amen. Look at that. The psalmist was crying out. I, I want to be what you want me to be clean. Yep, I'm admitting my faults. Lord, but people are messing with me, and I'm still believing that you're my hope. And so we have that Holy Spirit. We say, Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. Amen. For every last one of them. And he rose up on the third day, and he is seated on the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession on my behalf. Amen. So that God pours out his grace and his mercy, giving me another day to get it right. Amen. And I thank him and I give him glory for that. And I need that because I'm a sinner and I'm an enemy of God and I need a savior. And so, Lord, come into my life. I give you my life. Like this psalmist was saying, Lord, I, I put my life before you. I lift up my soul before you. Jesus, become my Lord and savior. And uh, if you and I repent of my sins, if you made that confession of faith today, you're in a family. Amen. You have a family. You're in the family of God. Jesus said, those who are in my family are those who do the will of the one who sent me. Amen. So look for a Bible believing, a Bible teaching church, a ministry that helps you to know the Lord better, that leads you to Jesus. Amen. That comes alongside on your journey. Amen. And even if it's got boundaries, even though it has accountability, amen, that, but not cruelty and not a lot of uh, misrepresentation or a lot of mistakes in their theology. Um, and you can also follow us, amen, until you find that place. Again, we're on Facebook, on Pastor Tina Meditating Life Center, right? There'll be after some cleaning on there. My I who died of breast cancer, cancer that was a, a minister, but it's Pastor Tina Meditating Life Center. Or you can go to Tina Hampton Hurt or uh, my YouTube channel, Minister Tina, and just praise and worship with us until you find where you should be so that you can use your gifting. Um, soon we should have a physical location. We're waiting on the Lord on that. We're not trying to jump out there. You know, so many ministries have two or three people. If they feel like that's what the Lord wants them to do, God bless it. But I, I just want to wait on the Lord for whatever we're going to do. And we're just going to keep on speaking his word, keep on praising his holy name right where we are until he says something different. That's taking us this far. It'll take us to the end. So God bless you. God be with you until we meet again. And you stay blessed.